Welcome to Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. I'm your host, Thomas Connolly. I happen to be a gay actor, and I live in the gayest city of them all, West Hollywood, California. Now, today's episode is about a very popular gay porno actor who married a woman, a legendary chanteuse of American song. Now, in my opinion, this is a fascinating story of how someone winds up being a gay porno actor and its resulting impact on the gay community. Oh, save this one for the family table over Sunday dinner. Our journey begins with the birth of John Robert Stillman on July 11th, 1946, to an upper crust, wealthy Beverly Hills family. His father was a very successful television producer with such shows as Rawhide and the long-running Bonanza series. His mother was a former dancer in the splashy, outrageous Busby Berkeley musicals. Look at some of these glamorous images. John knew at a very early age that his passion was to be an actor, and at the age of 10, he landed a role on the religious series Faith of Our Children, starring Eleanor Powell. This boy had it going on with good looks, acting skills, and a family with show business contacts. His clean-cut all-American image was in the vein of Tab Hunter and Troy Donahue. However, even with all that going for him, he was unsuccessful as a mainstream actor in Hollywood. It kind of bears out the brutal statistics of those who make it as a working actor in Hollywood. Now, according to the Screen Actors Guild, known as SAG, there are 160,000 members of the union and less than 1% make it as a full-time working actor in Hollywood. Would. And there are millions of more people trying to get into the union. So I know I sound like Debbie Downer, but the odds are just not great for making it big time in Hollywood. And such was the case with John Stillman. Not finding work in Hollywood, he made his first appearance in a male strip show in 1970 at the age of 23. This is where he adopted the name Jack Wrangler. And what do you know? The male strip show became a slippery slope to the world of gay porno. Incidentally, Jack Wrangler was very open about his homosexuality. He said that he was aware of being gay at the age of 10. Jack Jack Wrangler soon became the biggest gay porno star for Magnum Studios, starring in such classics as Kansas City trucking company and a night at the adonis i'm not sure why but these movies got no academy award recognition now it seems that a porno actor has a limited shelf life and jack worked it for as long as he could but as he approached his 40s his porno career tapered off he ultimately starred in some 47 adult films. Now, it must be noted that many people consider Jack Wrangler an icon in the gay community for teaching us all about various gay sex acts. Now, you have to remember that prior to Stonewall in 1969, it was illegal to be a practicing gay man or lesbian woman in this country. Now, Jack Wrangler comes along in the early 1970s, and he literally offers a master class in teaching gay men about various sex acts. He said, after Stonewall, we were trying to find out who the hell we were as a gay community, because it was like, oh my God, there are other people who like the same things as me, like leather or being blown on a pool table. My high school sex ed class left that part out. But through his adult films, Jack Wrangler became an educator of sorts and an icon for the gay community. There's an award-winning documentary all about this, aptly titled Jack Wrangler, Anatomy of an Icon. Also, Jack Wrangler recounted some hysterical anecdotes about his adult film career and his role in the gay community in his autobiography entitled Jack Wrangler, What's a Nice Boy Like You Doing? 
At the age of 40, he appeared in his last porno, The Rising Star. Then all of a sudden, his life took an unpredictable turn when gay Jack Wrangler married legendary American chanteuse Margaret Whiting, who was 22 years older than him in 1976. He said, I was with my manager when I looked over at Margaret. There she was with the hair, the furs, and the big gestures. That glamour, I knew I had to meet her. Their romance quickly began. Margaret was a major singing star who had sold millions of records. Her biggest hits were Moonlight in Vermont and That Old Black Magic. Now, interestingly enough, Jack Wrangler said he was still gay even though he was marrying a woman. In his words, he said, I am not bisexual and I'm not straight, I'm gay but I could never live a gay lifestyle because I'm too competitive. A woman is different. That's doable for me. What? Could someone explain that to me? Now he goes on to say, I told my wife that I was never going to cheat on her with a guy. So my sex life became very masturbatory. And I'm good at that. Very good at that, in fact. Well, there's a badge of honor. Is that TMI, too much information? Well, come on, he's nothing if not honest. And I think he had a fascinating life. A gay icon who educated the gay community on a wide range of sex acts and gave it all up to marry a woman and masturbate. See, you can't make this stuff up. Life is often stranger than fiction. Now, Jack Wrangler died at the age of 62 from emphysema. He was a lifelong smoker, but he was married to Margaret Whiting right on up to the end. Well, that's about it for this episode. This is Thomas Connolly for Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. Hey, if you like what you see, could you please like and subscribe? That would really help sustain our show. Until next time, bye-bye.